now coupled with this assessment that i would like uh, re request you to speak mm -hmm. and i would also like you to cover uh, one uh, aspect pertaining to tibet where I would refer to your statement that you had made at VIF way back on, uh, I found from Internet 6 and 7 September 2011. Wow. And well, you had I asserted <laughs> that <laughs> reciprocity must be the guiding principle in India's response to China, okay. especially in the context of Tibet. Okay. Now, 12 years almost have passed. Uh, would you like to elaborate? Do you still stand by that? Okay, so I'll, I'll put Tibet in, con in the context of yes. what steps we need to take. Yes. Exactly. And, and uh, let me say, uh, it hurts me to say anything about India's China policy because I was a part of that establishment. I have also held yes. talks with the Chinese of the Foreign Secretary. But as I look at the situation as a professional, I feel that the time has come not for a U-turn, because that, that is not our style of functioning, but at least a course correction is called for. Okay. And I have a few uh, suggestions right. uh, which will constitute the course correction. Okay. Okay. Nothing very dramatic, but uh, let's start with, first, let's stop soft power with China. It just makes them more arrogant. Doesn't, doesn't work. Doesn't work. It okay. makes them more arrogant, as we have seen. You know? The signals are getting stronger that it doesn't matter. Uh, secondly, we need to define India's core strategic interests. The Chinese have done so. They have said these are our core interests and these are not negotiable. Tibet and Taiwan are included in that. You can't mess with them. I think the time has come for us to say these are our core interests and these are not negotiable. But we haven't defined it yet. And unless we define it, the Chinese will not take us seriously okay. because they are doing salami slicing a yes. uh, little bit each exactly. time yes. and making it permanent. Okay. Third is stop uh, dragging, feet dragging in the quad. The quad I think is the most important uh, uh, instrument to face China yes. in the Indo-Pacific. We are here in the Indian Ocean region but we are facing China in the Indo-Pacific along with a group of three other countries. That is, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, US, Australia and Japan. So what, would you explain a little further what exactly are you sort of driving at? What I'm saying is the Quad was formed yes. almost two decades ago. Then it sort of got out of fashion. We didn't mention the Quad, nobody mentioned the Quad. Then there has been a revival for the Quad. And surprisingly, it is uh, Joe Biden who has asked for the Quad to be strengthened. And he was the one who, uh, who convened the first summit meeting on, on the Quad. So India is now... Do you uh, mean more efforts need to be put in in that direction? In that direction. Okay. But as you see the evolution of Quad, the Americans were clearly having China in mind okay. and mentioning China. India was reluctant to mention China, saying, no, 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 it is not aimed at any country. It is open-ended. We can have more members than four. And we will uh, discuss um, COVID, for instance, or climate change and so on. This is a discussion body. Now, I think this is diluting the quad. What is the benefit? We don't need a forum for discussion on climate change with four, three other countries. What we need is a forum that is strong enough to give a signal to China. And that's for us. In the strategic sphere. Yeah. Okay. Now, the Americans, the Australians, the Japanese have their own <coughs> military alliances to deal with China. Okay. We are not part of that. This is our only platform. So I would say India's efforts to dilute it and pretend that uh, it's not aimed at China, it's, it's no relevance. I think we should drop this uh, pretense and say, yes, we are concerned about the efforts of countries to disrupt the geopolitical situation in the Indo-Pacific. That affects our, our interests. But and therefore, we join wholeheartedly with the other three partners in making it a strong strategic block. And this, uh, I will illustrate by saying, 
There was a point, there was a period where American think tanks had concluded that India was a bad bet. Actually, it's a term used by one of the India experts who is of Indian origin. Uh, that is Ashley Tellis. Okay. It, it was surprising coming from Ashley Tellis, who was always supportive of this, saying, you know, the, you can't trust the Indians. They're never going to, if you have a problem on Taiwan, they're no, never going to help the US. And uh, I think India is proving bet. to be a bad bet. Now, that is, is not a label I'm proud of, that India is a bad bet. Uh, because it, it portrays India as being unreliable. You want to get all the benefits from a partnership, but when they are in trouble, you're saying, sorry, that doesn't concern me, that's yours. It, it also begs the question, yes. if you are saying that, say about Ukraine, not my business, you know, the two partners should meet. What happens if we have a confrontation on the LSE and other countries, our friends will say, hey, that doesn't concern us, you two sort of sort it out yourselves. So I'm looking at the future when the situation with China is increasingly becoming dangerous for India, for India not to, uh, to downplay the threat from China is, I think, not giving us a good name. And therefore, I, I think we should make it clear to the Americans that, that if they have a confrontation in Taiwan, Indian troops are not going to rush to, to fight with them. Nor do we expect that if we have a confrontation on the LSE, that American troops and equipment will come to us. We don't expect that. But we have a cooperation. We'll certainly help each other in our crisis situation. Because America's crisis is also our crisis. There's a commonality. But uh, how, would, how do you see uh, India's military cooperations with the other three partners that you mentioned uh, in a bilateral uh, stance? Well, uh, bilaterally, as I mentioned earlier, yes. we're having uh, more joint exercises with the United States than with any other country. There have been with the Australians, with yeah. Japanese. Then we are having um, uh, quadrilateral collaborations. Yes. Where the navies of India, US, uh, Japan and Australia have come together. Yes. And joint, uh, joint naval exercises. Sometimes we have invited other powers to take, take part in that. So you would like this to be elevated to perhaps no, a more formal no, and no. distinct. I, I want India to stop saying the Quad is, uh, is uh, just a discussion forum. Okay. And actually, this what I am suggesting actually has started. Okay. Because when the joint statements was issued yes. in, in Washington on the 22nd of June, there is a whole paragraph on the Quad where India has agreed with the US to make the quad stronger. Okay. This is what I was aiming at and I'm glad okay. this is happening. Now, the next is reciprocity. Yes. What I mentioned as, as you quoted yes. me. Reciprocity is very essential where we are dealing with an adversary who is threatening us. Because it's the old tit for tat. You do this, we'll do that to you. Yes. Not give the adversary the impression that no matter what they do, We'll, we'll smile and say, well, let's, let's resolve it peacefully. Let's start with reciprocity with China on one major issue. In every joint statement, the Chinese insist that you quote the one China policy. That means you are saying that you adhere to respect for China's territorial integrity and sovereignty. And we have subscribed to that, one China, right? Now, I will say, all right, but we also want China, in return, to proclaim a one India policy. Then you will commit yourself to preserving our territorial integrity, which we are not doing now. You are actually uh, making inroads into our territory. You are claiming Arunachal Pradesh. You, you are helping the Pakistanis. So, I want reciprocity. Reciprocity is a direct signaling. This indirect signaling is not working with China. So I wanted a clearer uh, uh, demarcation and we want to take steps. Uh, but uh, in the reciprocity, yes. if uh, we want one China and one India yes. uh, would be the thing, 
where does tibet go into that are we prepared okay, to, to yeah. last but uh, following reciprocity yes i have uh, one suggestion here the chinese had no hesitation in have, having an agreement with uh, pakistan to cede what we consider to be our territory which is yes. was in pok the chinese had no hesitation in having projects through the bri in pakistan occupied kashmir they are violating yes our our sovereignty and our territorial integrity we have done nothing about it except feeble protests okay what i am suggesting is if they could do that with pakistan why can't we do that with taiwan taiwan is not a sovereign state i grant you and under one china policy taiwan is legally part of china but increasingly taiwan is recognized as a separate entity it is a reality and many countries in the world are having relations with taiwan in spite of the chinese protests yes. what is holding us back in upgrading our tie ties with taiwan and i'll tell you why i'm not satisfied we are so circumspect about taiwan that when they have an office here which is headed by an ambassador designated by them we recognize it as the uh, uh, cultural and economic coordination center of taipei now several objections i have to this firstly they want to be known as taiwan but we say taipei because it makes the chinese happier okay and a cultural center for taipei why do we need a cultural center look at what uh, uh, how much power this little island has 90% of the world's uh, chips are manufactured in taiwan by the taiwanese that is the technology of the future and the chinese have virtual monopoly right because they also source their chips from yes. taiwan we have agreed with the americans recently after prime minister modi's visit that we will start collaboration on a reliable semiconductor change and we will start manufacturing uh, uh, chips and semiconductors in india but in the short run you will not be able to do that it takes you 10 15 years before you can actually start manufacturing because it's such a complex technology in the short run what should do have closer tie ups with taiwan and again as i was uh, framing these suggestions i found that it has already found partial acceptance by the government in the recent visit in the recent visit not recent visit we have had many uh, business delegations coming and one of them was from foxcom okay foxcom is a taiwanese company which right. has the virtual monopoly of the semiconductor business okay. and prime minister modi decided to come on the same platform with the ceo of foxcom i think it's a good signal okay but i want i want that in giving a signal to china let us also upgrade our relations with taiwan and do what the other countries are doing and china has accepted them other countries have sent serving diplomats to serve uh, in in taiwan we are hesitating we did it only once and then we stopped it why because the chinese were upset about it okay i think we should now ignore chinese protests and say okay you are not saying that to the united states you are not saying that to to uh, britain or germany why do you object to us if you call them taiwan and not taipei why do we have to call it a cultural and economic center the the americans call it the trade representation of taiwan in the united states let's call it trade representation of taiwan in india is perfectly all right because i think hereafter our uh, economic cooperation will be more and more vital for 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 india